Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Alhamdulillah This is now episode 20 of the podcast The Forward With myself brother Mahdi Locke And today I thought I'd do something a bit different Because I do want to experiment with different things And try to branch out a bit with this podcast And not just always focus on one thing So instead of doing hadith uh, The Arabi al this week I like to try something else And um the idea came to me because yesterday I was uh, reading Quran, I was reading Surah Al-Ma'idah, and I came across the story of Qabil and Habil, the, the uh, Qabil and Habil, the two sons of Adam. And this is a very, very interesting story, and it is relevant uh, to world events. And it's a story that is not often talked about. You don't often hear lectures or classes about it. But it is in the Quran, and there is very interesting tafsir uh, that can be read. I was, I, I'm going to look at the tafsir of Imam Wahbu Zuhaili, uh, his tafsir al wasit That's his middle tafsir because he has a short one, he has a very, very long one, about 17 volumes, and he has a middle-sized one, which is about three thick volumes. But this story is very, very important because, well, for starters, usually when there's a terrorist attack in the West, committed by a Muslim, unfortunately. Um, Muslims in response will quote the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah where Allah says, and this is in verse 32, so we decreed for the tribe of Israel, of, of, of Israel or Israel, that if someone kills another person, unless it is in retaliation for someone else or for causing corruption in the land, it is as if he has murdered, it is as if he had murdered all of mankind. Um, and this is obviously the clear proof that killing is unlawful and so on and so forth. But people rarely take the story back and actually look at the full context. Because it starts off by saying, so we describe, okay, well, why? There's something before this. So if we look at the Arabic, when that verse starts off, because of that we prescribed upon the children of Israel. What is, on account of what? So, let's read these verses in full. And this is a story, again, that is found in the Bible. It's found, so it's a story that Christians and Jews should be familiar with, but this is the understanding in Islam of this story. And uh, inshallah, we will derive some lessons from it. So the verses are like this. Allah says, this is the translation, Recite to them the true report of Adam's two sons when they offered a sacrifice, and it was accepted from one of them, but not accepted from the other. The one said, I shall kill you. The other said, Allah only accepts from people who are God-fearing. Even if you do raise your hand against me to kill me, I am not going to raise my hand against you to kill you. Truly, I fear Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. I want you to take on both my wrongdoing and your wrongdoing, and so become one of the companions of the fire. That is the repayment of the wrongdoers. So his lower self persuaded him to kill his brother, and he killed him and became one of the lost. Then Allah sent a crow which scratched at the earth to show him how to conceal his brother's corpse. He said, Woe is me, can I not even be like this crow and conceal my brother's corpse? And he became one of those who suffer bitter remorse on account of that. So we decreed for the tribe of Israel, the tribe of Israel, that if someone kills another person, unless it is in retaliation for someone else or for causing corruption in the earth, it is as if he had murdered all mankind. And if someone saves another person's life, it is as if he had given life to all mankind. Our messengers came to them with clear signs, but even after that, many of them committed outrages in the earth. And this is Surah Al-Ma'idah. This is the fifth chapter in the Quran, verses 27 through to 32. So Imam Wahbu Zuhaili, he puts these verses under the heading, the first crime of killing in the earth or in this life. This is the first time that this crime is committed, the crime of taking someone's life uh, without right, without, uh, without, any just, without any justification. So he says that the right of life is a sanctified right and is not permissible 
to shed sacred blood or transgress against a person without any justification or any lawful reason. Because man is Allah's creation in this world. And every transgression against him is a, is a transgression against what Allah has done. It's a tra transgression against Allah's making. And you are overstepping a wisdom of his, and you're transgressing his will, or you're challenging his will. And this is why Allah in the Qur'an, he detests and he loathes this first crime of killing that happened in the world. And it is the killing of Qabil, or Qabil killing his brother Habil, or what they call in English Cain and Abel. And Allah, the Exalted, says, and this is the verses I repeated to you before, or I, re I, re I read out to you before. So the meaning is, so the first part it says, Recite to them the true report of Adam's two sons when they offered a sacrifice. The meaning is that you should read out to people the story of the two sons of Adam, Cain and Abel, or Kabil and Habil, the true actual event, the, uh, give, give a true elucidation of this actual event with no increase or decrease without adding anything or subtracting anything, in which both of them offered a sacrifice to Allah as an act of worship, as an act of uh, obedience. They both offered a sacrifice to Allah. Qabil, or Cain, he was a man of crops. That was, his, that was his business. He was a person of crops. And he presented, he put forward uh, the worst of what he had. Ardamandu, or another, in reality test here, he put, he put forward the worst of what he had. Habil, or Abel, on the other hand, he was a man of livestock. And he put forward the best of what he had, the best of, the best of his livestock. And the, the, uh, the custom in that time is that when, someone put for, was, when they put forward a sacrifice, they would stand, and they would pray, and they would prostrate, and then if a fire came down and consumed the sacrifice, that was evidence that had been accepted. So in this case, the, the fire came down and it consumed Abel's, uh, or Abel's sacrifice, which was a ram. He had sacrificed the best of his rams and the, the fire came down and consumed it and that was proof that his, uh, his sacrifice was accepted. So, after it had been accepted and, and was no longer visible, it had been removed from sight because it had been burnt and Allah had accepted the sacrifice of, of Abel, the crops that Cain had left, that Qabil had left, were, were abandoned. Nothing happened to them, meaning the sacrifice was not accepted. So, Qabil or, became full of hatred towards his brother Habil, and he threatened him with death. He threatened that he would kill him. Habil says, what is, my, what is my sin? What have I done wrong? And that Allah did not accept it from you. So rectify yourself, for indeed Allah only accepts from those who are God-fearing. He only accepts the deeds of those who are God-fearing. So here is an immense lesson. So what we're learning here, what Imam Muhammad Zuhid is explaining, is that the sacrifice of... Qabil is rejected because he's offering the worst of what he has. To, of what he has, the sacrifice of Habil of of Abel of of, of uh, Abel is being accepted because he's offering the best of what he has. And you can also refer to the to, the Tafsir of Imam Al Jozi. He also mentions another opinion people give is that in 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 general in general sense, Abel or or Habil, he was a God fearing person. He was a God fearing. He he had more taqwa. And that's why Allah accepted his sacrifices, whereas Cain was not as such, and therefore his sacrifices were rejected. But we can see we can we can see a lot of wisdoms that are to be derived from this. For starters, what we should understand here is that if your life is not going the way you want it to go, or you feel that you are being persecuted or you're being victimized or people are conspiring against you and 
that will, will make you or that makes you look at other people who appear to be better off than you they're wealthier or they're happier or they're more comfortable or they have more money whatever it is and that fills you with jealousy and you think oh that's not fair why does that person have such and such and I don't that's not fair and that fills you with jealousy and an envy this is what's happening here but what we learn from this lesson is that instead of being angry and jealous and looking at other people and saying why is so and so like that why does so and so have all this why is so why why is so and so seemingly you know blessed and so fortunate in this life and i'm in my miserable state the solution to the problem is within you and this is what this is the way my wife would say he puts it he says what is my sin that Allah has not accepted your sacrifice. Faslah nafsik. Faslah nafsik. Rectify yourself. Rectify yourself. If you're in this situation, rectify yourself. The the whole beginning of, of you want people talk about I want to change the world, I want to change uh, the situation around me, you have to start with yourself. So this so this is this is a situation where we recognize that, that the victim mentality, which again is so prevalent in the Muslim world, so prevalent amongst Muslims, not just the Muslim world, I say Muslims in general, uh, especially in former colonial countries, there's no justification for it. And, th- and, 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 and if we compare this, we take these this story and we put it alongside the verse in Surah Al-Rad, Ayah 11, where Allah said that He does not change a people until they change it in themselves, meaning your situation will not change until you change it in yourselves. This is where it all starts. It starts with you. Are you being the best Muslim that you can be? Are you being the best believer that you can be? Don't allow yourself to fall in the situation where you look at other people and you just feel jealous because all uh, Cain has to do, all Kabil has to do to have his sacrifice accepted is pretty obvious. He should offer the best of what he has. Habil is offering the best of what he has. He's doing his best. He's giving his best and Allah is rewarding him for it. Kabil, on the other hand, Cain, he's offering the worst of what he has and it's not being accepted. So it should be obvious to him what he needs to do. And if we even take the even if we take the other even if we take the other uh, explanation for this the other the, the other opinion of this that, ba- that in, in general terms uh, Habil is more righteous he's more God fearing than than uh, Qabil then Qabil just needs to make himself more righteous rectify and, and this is evidenced here rectify yourself make yourself a better believer make yourself a better person and then things will work out for you but instead what Qabil decides to do what Cain decides to do. He just says, "I'm going to kill you." This just isn't fair. So I'm just going to kill you. Which makes you think about a lot of the terrorism in the world. I mean, is, is that what it comes down to? There are Muslims in a certain part of the world and world that just want to kill Westerners. Is, is that why? You're, you're, are you, are, is that why? Are they jealous that certain people uh, in Dar al Kufr that, that they're wealthier, that they're more prosperous? And therefore, the solution is just to kill them instead of actually looking at yourself and saying, how can I better myself? How can I make my life better? But instead, there's this just despair. I think this, this just isn't fair. Life just isn't fair. How can they do this? Yes, I understand. You want to talk about you know, you know, foreign policy, Western foreign policy in Muslim lands. But that doesn't make every single person living in those countries guilty. No, it doesn't work that way. Sorry, we don't, we don't believe in collective guilt. That doesn't make every single one of them, one of them guilty. You know, let's go around killing innocent people. But is this why? Does, is this what it comes down to? Just this, this sort of jealousy. It's not fair. They have organized, clean, prosperous countries, and we don't kill them. Is, 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 this, is this the justification? Is, is this what, we're, what Muslims have sunk into? This is really something to think about. This is really something to think about. So Imam Muhammad Zuhayli, he continues, and he to... to uh, elucidate and to expound on what Abel is saying to his brother, what, what Habil is saying to his brother. He's saying, well, my brother, if you extend your hand 
in evil, in order to oppress me, in order to kill me out of oppression and animosity, then I will not stretch out my hand to kill you, ever, because I fear Allah. Again, it's very, very important. I fear Allah. And again, he's stressing, this is, this is like another reminder of, of like, this is why my sacrifices are accepted. I fear Allah. What, I'm not going to kill Why would I kill you? I have nothing against you. And this is just jealousy from the part of Cain. I believe in Allah, the one who has raised us, the one who has promised us that, that he would take care of us and provide for us. And therefore, whoever kills the other or transgresses against him, he deserves Allah's stern punishment. Then he says, oh, my brother, this is, and my wife was the expounding on this, my brother, I do not want to respond to a crime with something like it. Which means that, indeed, if you kill me, then I will not, if you try to kill me, I will not try to do the, the same to you. I will not try to treat you in the same way. I will remove myself from treating you in the same way. Rather, I will have you, I want for you to bear my sin, or, or, or sorry, to bear my sin by killing me. You will take, you will bear the burden of my sins by killing me, and your sins before this transgression of yours against me. And therefore, you will be from the people of the fire. That is the reward of those who oppress themselves and at the same time transgress against others. So he warns him against killing in three ways. Right? So, so Abel warns Cain. Habil, Habil warns Qabil in three ways. He warns against killing him. He warns him. He says, you should fear Allah. Because I fear Allah. Fear Allah. Don't do this. Then he says, you will bear the burden of two sins. The sin of killing me and the sin of oppressing your own self. And then you will be from the oppressors who are the companions of the fire. But then his ego and his desires made it appear praiseworthy to him. Made it appear pr praiseworthy. So, so it says in the translation, so his lower self, and this is his, like his ego, his nafs, persuaded him to kill his brother, and so he killed him and became one of the lost. So, meaning he, he becomes one of those who, as Imam Muhammad Zuhaydi explains, he becomes one of those who loses themselves in this dunya, in this life, and the hereafter because of the, this crime of killing. Then he realized that he doesn't know what to do with the corpse of his brother. So Allah sends a live crow towards a dead crow. So, there's, so, so this is the explanation. There's meant to be two crows. Allah sends a live crow to a dead crow, and the, the living crow obviously digs up uh, in the earth, makes a hole in the earth, and then throws the other crow in and covers him, right? And this is in order to teach uh, Qabil how to cover up his brother and bury him. And then this is when he feels woe for himself that he could not do the same thing so he regrets what he's what he did but meaning meaning and this is the point he regrets what he did but he does not regret it in the sense of he regrets killing him so much he, he, he it's not repentance to Allah what he regrets is that he did not actually benefit from killing him this is what Imam Muhammad Zahid explains. So he says that he became he regretted what he did, but it was not Toba because he did not regret and he did not repent did not repent from the actual act of disobedience. Rather, his regret uh, rather his regret with regards to killing his brother was because he did not benefit from killing him. And his parents became angry with him and his sisters, and he was one of, and he was from one of those who devised an evil sunnah like he he established an evil practice and therefore he bears the burden of this of this practice the burden the burden of this action of all of those who come after him until the day of judgment so again this is serious this is a serious thing this this indicates that his intentions are wrong so he he kills the person he kills the he, he kills his brother he sees the crow come and bury him. He, feel, he, he, says, he, says, he says, Woe is me, can I not even be like this crow and consume my brother's corpse? 
and he became one of those who suffered bitter remorse on account of that. But what that really means is he's not he's not regretting the Masiya. He's not regretting the, regretting the act of disobedience. What he's regretting is the fact that he didn't actually benefit from killing his brother. That's what his regret is. So it's not a sincere regret. Imam Wahab Zuhaili, he, he clarifies, he means, Qabil was one of the disobedience. He was not a disbeliever. He's one of the disobedient. He's not a disbeliever. And Bukhari Muslim relate a hadith on the story of Ibn Mas'ud. And he says, no one kills another soul, or no soul is killed oppressively or unjustly, except that the son of Adam has a portion of it. Because he was the first person to establish the practice of killing. And so because of this, this detestable crime, Allah prescribed for the children of Israel in the Torah and those after them in the religion of Isa and, 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 and uh, of the revealed law of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah bless him into peace, that whoever kills a soul without right, i.e. without any just cause, in terms of, like, like such as retaliation or killing because of uh, corruption on the earth, or in order to, to establish security on the earth and so forth, such as you know brigands and uh, invaders and so forth, in which, in which case it, it, it is, uh, is halal, is lawful to kill such people, if, if, someone ki if someone kills someone else outside of these justifiable reasons, justified reasons, then as if he has killed all of mankind. And whoever saves a life, I prevents it from being killed. Then as, as if he has saved or he's given life to all of humanity by providing security and safety and tranquility and indeed every soul is a member of the human community and the right of life is sanctified and maintained and protected for all of mankind and the messengers of Allah have come the noble messengers of Allah have come or came to the, came to the, children, came to the children of Israel with clear signs as clear as the sun regarding the halal and the haram. This is interesting because I just finished this uh, hadith last week, the hadith of the halal and the haram, the lawful and the unlawful. But, but many people, Imam Wahab Zuhaydi continues, Wahab Zuhaydi continues, he says, but many people, despite this, they still transgress the bounds and they engage in killing and disobedience. So that is Imam Wahab Zuhaydi's tafsir of this story, which I wanted to just... Uh, share with you and go over, and it's very, very important, uh, important story. I think in terms of the lessons we learn from it. I think two of them, the ones that stuck out, uh, stood out to me, were the source of killing and why killing is so wrong. Primarily, as a, as he explains, as Imam Muhammad Zuhaili rahimahullah explains, that you are transgressing against Allah's making. You're transgressing against Allah's will, and. From that, this issue of victimhood and jealousy, because this is a huge, huge problem in in uh, in the Muslim world and amongst Muslims. This constant feeling of well, we're oppressed, we're oppressed, we're oppressed, and everyone's oppressing us. You know, welcome to the dunya. Well, everyone is a victim in one way or another. Everyone suffers some sort of oppression one way or another. Don't think that you're that you're special. You know, only you had an abusive childhood. Only you had a horrible experience at school. Only you have a really bad job. No. Everyone throughout the world suffers some sort of oppression one way or another. This is how life is. Everyone suffers. Everyone hurts. But w what you have to do is you have to look at yourself and, and, and work as hard as you can to lessen that suffering, to mitigate that suffering. And you do that by improving yourself, by trying to be, as I explained in my last uh, episode about purification of the heart, rectification of the heart, is you want to improve yourself and be virtuous so that you can bear the suffering of this world, so that you always have your virtuousness to fall back on when you go through suffering times, when you go through hard times. Don't be in a state where you're constantly feeling... Uh, 
that you're a victim of something because that's disempowering. What what is empowering is the belief that you can change your situation. This is what Allah says in Surah Al-Rad in the 13th chapter, verse 11. Allah does not change a people until they change what is in themselves. But not being fussy him. Change what is in yourself, what is inside your soul. Work on that. Rectify it. Figure out why you have certain certain unconscious beliefs or subconscious beliefs that push you to do certain things and push you away from doing certain things that, you're, that you know you're supposed to be doing. You have to do this with yourself. You have to sit down and examine your state and why you do certain things, why you think certain things. Think about your childhood. Think about your past. Think about events in your life. Think about anything traumatic that might have happened to you that could have made you think in a certain way or act in a certain way. And do your best to rectify that. Don't look at the rest of the world. Don't look at the rest of the world and complain and whinge and feel, and feel, and feel jealous. That doesn't benefit you at all. And this is what we learn from this story. Now, now uh, Qabil or Cain, he didn't, he didn't regret killing his brother because it was disobedience, but he did regret killing his brother. He did regret killing his brother because there's no benefit to gain from it. And this is, this is a lesson that Allah is teaching us, that, that to play the victim in and of itself is of no benefit. And then to act upon it and transgress against people who are doing better than you in life, that leads to more ruin. It's not going to benefit you. There's no benefit to be had. If we want to have success in our lives and we want to have a success, success relationship with the, with the law and, have successful, and, have, and, have, and be successful in the hereafter, then what we need to do is work on ourselves and bettering ourselves. And that requires patience, it requires hard work, it requires study, it requires research, it requires reflection, it requires prayer, it requires supplication, it requires effort. And at times it will be scary, at times it will be painful, but this is what needs to be done. As Imam Abulti would put it, it's, it you, you need to renew your bay'ah with Allah, renew your pledge with Allah, and work on yourself. And with Allah alone is every success. Alhamdulillah. I hope this has been beneficial. Inshallah, I will stop there. Inshallah, next week I might do the return to the hadith. And then in about two weeks' time, I think I will do a preparation for Ramadan episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.